من أكبر الاضطرابات التي شهدها الاقتصاد العالمي وقطاع الطاقة هذا العام هو ما حدث ويحدث في مجال الشحن البحري أسعار الشحن البحري اليوم أغلى بنحو 160% مقارنة بما كانت عليه مطلع أكتوبر الماضي وخلال آخر أسبوعين فقط ارتفعت الأسعار بنسبة وصلت إلى 30% كل هذا يعود إلى الاضطرابات والهجمات الحاصلة في البحر الأحمر خلال الفترة الممتدة ما بين نوفمبر وأبريل الماضي حدث أكثر من 50 هجوم على السفن التجارية التي كانت تبحر في البحر الأحمر وهو أمر انعكس في ابتعاد ما يصل إلى 90% من الشركات شركات الشحن الكبرى ابتعدوا عن ممر البحر الأحمر وقناة السويس ولجأوا إلى طريق بديل هو رأس الرجاء الصالح الذي تزيد مدة الرحلة عبره بنحو 10 إلى 15 يوما تأثير كان أكثر حدة في مجال قطاع الطاقة منذ أربعة أشهر لم يشهد مضيق باب المندب مرور أي سفينة للغاز المسال فيما تشير تقدير أخرى إلى تراجع حركة ناقلة النفط بنسبة وصلت إلى 50% هذه التطورات ألقت ولا تزال تلقي بظلالها على الاقتصاد العالمي ككل حيث جاءت في وقت كنا نشهد فيه عمليا تراجعا في حوادث الشحن البحري تاريخيا كانت تفقد هذه الصناعة أكثر من 200 سفينة سنويا في تسعينات القرن الماضي لكن تراجع عدد الخسائر خلال عام 2023 تراجع إلى 26 سفينة فقط وهو أدنى مستوى يسجل في تاريخ الشحن البحري لكن هذه الصورة قد تتقلب مجددا الآن ولا سيما أن معظم التوقعات ترجح استمرار الاضطرابات في قطاع الشحن البحري حتى نهاية العام على أقل تقدير قد التقينا في وقت سابق مع رئيس تداول وتقارير السوق في اس ام بي جلوبال كوميديتي انسايتس ديف ارنسبرجر وسالناه عن تاثير التوترات الجيوسياسيه في منطقه الشرق الاوسط على اسواق النفط وسبب الاستجابه المحدوده للاسعار مع هذه التوترات فلنستمع الى ما قاله So the, the geopolitical stability here in the Middle East is one of the most fundamentally important questions for the price of oil specifically and the price of energy more generally in the global marketplace. So it's fair to say that um, whether consumers are looking at this from China and Japan or the US and Canada or Europe or really anywhere else in the world, People are paying very close attention to what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis on the ground here in the Middle East. But in terms of how it affects the price, um, whether um, tensions escalate or de-escalate, there are really two things to think about there. Firstly, um, from a supply capacity perspective, there's actually plenty of reserve production capacity that is available to the market. We estimate at least 7 million barrels a day of oil um, extra capacity is available to the market. Uh, so that helps to diminish the impact of geopolitical instability. We've seen that in the last 60 days where uh, there have been significant um, instability uh, here in the region, and yet the price of oil hasn't broken through $100 a barrel. That's point number one. Point number two, though, is simply that um, when there's instability here in the Middle East, it, it inevitably makes the market less efficient. So the price of shipping is higher. The time to get to market is longer. And there's probably longer lasting effects from this instability that are embedded into the price that will be there for some time to come. Yeah, certainly uh, the events uh, in Iran over the weekend are just the latest example 
of the kinds of surprises that can happen that keep everybody uh, nervous and, um, uh, and, and mindful about what's happening here in the Middle East because there are plenty of events just like that that are a big, big surprise. But again, because there is plenty of extra supply capacity, um, the market uh, generally is taking the view that most of these surprises can be handled and they don't affect the price of oil too much as long as the general intention uh, among governments and uh, policymakers is to try and diffuse and de-escalate. So, you know, the market tends not to over-respond, but every event like that causes people to be concerned. إيرنس بيرجر تحدث لنا أيضا عن تأثير الهجمات الأوكرانية على قطاع الطاقة الروسي وعما إذا كانت الدول الآسيوية ستواصل عمليات الشراء الضخمة لإمدادات النفط والغاز الروسية فلنستمع Well, the war in Ukraine um, has dramatically changed the way that energy markets function uh, since it began in 2022. Uh, already we've seen the flow of oil and gas uh, turn upside down uh, in Europe and Asia. So a lot of Russian oil goes to Asia, a lot of Asian oil goes to Europe. So we've seen those changes happen and that caused a lot of volatility and it caused for a brief time very high prices. We're now in a phase with the war in Ukraine where two things seem to be clear. Firstly, that there is no prospect of a diplomatic solution to that war anytime soon, which is a great shame uh, for everybody involved and, and a shame for the market as well. So we can expect that war to continue for the, for the medium term future here, a couple of years perhaps. The second thing that's clear about it is Ukraine is finding ways to strike back against Russia. Those drone attacks on refineries um, have been a surprise uh, to the market. And we estimate that currently around 700,000 barrels a day of Russian refining is off, off stream right now as uh, Russia looks to repair uh, damage to different operating units at refineries across the country. So Ukraine is having a big effect on Russian refining. What that does is it deprives um, different markets of diesel supplies, whether it's South America or uh, the Mediterranean, places that have been taking Russian diesel, and it pulls in diesel into those markets that would otherwise be going to other buyers. So effectively, it creates a shortage of diesel in the market and a much bigger shortage than people were expecting only six months ago. Yeah, for, for sure, uh, Asian buyers uh, are already taking about as much Russian oil and gas as they possibly can. And by Asian buyers, we really mean Indian buyers first and foremost, and Chinese buyers second. And really what's going on there is uh, the Russian oil and gas was being sold at a discount. So India and China bought as much as they possibly could. They don't have the logistical capacity to consume any more than they do today. The other thing that's going on there is the Chinese um, demand in particular isn't growing as quickly as it was uh, before. So last year, uh, Chinese oil demand grew by about 1.2 million barrels a day. That effectively was able to take really all of Russia's extra supplies. But this year, Chinese demand is growing at only half that rate. Um, so there's a limit to how much more China and India can take at this point, mostly because of logistical reasons and secondly because the rate of growth is slowing down.